So, Steve, we have five categories today in our tier sets from 2019 to 2024. As I'm sure you can see, the top one is Prickly Perfection. Then we have Great, as in Great Henge. Yep. And then the third one, you know, it's just a middle ground. It was a set. Then we have Colossal Dreadful. That's uh, another smart creation of mine. Would it not be better as Colossal Dread Mawful? Shut up, Steve. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one is Never Go Back. So something we think deserves to get in the bin and we never want to see a sequel to. And to start off, we've got the okay. first set of 2019, which is War of the Spark. Okay, so um, I don't really know much about this set. It was before my time. I mm. do remember it had a pretty epic trailer. Yeah. With the... um, Lil Liliana under Bolas's control. And then she's like going back in time a little bit. And then she sets all these zombies on him. And it's got a really cool um, version of In the End by Linkin Park in the background. Yes. It's so stood there on top of his citizen. Yeah, that trailer was elite. Obviously it had massive cards like Finale of Devastation, Liliana, Dreadhorde, General, Khan. It had all those God Eternal cards. It had really, really good cards in the set. But was you... that the one with three fairy as well? The one that absolutely ruined yeah. the standard? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was obviously all about Planeswalkers. It was the end of that big Nicol Bolas war. It was, it was a good set. I, I'm not really that emotionally torn to it. So I don't know. I think for me, I'd either put it in great or it was a set. It definitely wasn't bad. I'm going to say it was a set. It was a set. Definitely a yeah, set. Yeah, there was a lot of Planeswalkers. Yeah. It was, we'll start here. We can always move it if we uh, if we see fit later on in the video. Moving on, yeah. uh, then we have Throne of Eldraine. What do you think of Throne? It was a set before I started playing, so it was still mm. around when I started playing Arena and all that sort of stuff. And all I can remember is Teamer Adventures. Mm. Absolutely doing my head in every day. It was so OP. Like in terms of Oko, Embercleave, Questing Beast has five million words on it. Mm. Brazen Borrower just popping up and pinging things back to your hand. The Great Henge. It was like, such, it insane? such a good power, set. Like, just compared to either anything that's come since then, I don't think is close in terms of the power level. Yeah. In the set. It's it was definitely the strongest one I've, I've seen. Such a great set. You had all those cattle lands. And uh, yeah, it was the first player spotlight card as well. Fervent Champion for the uh, 2018 World Champion Javier Dominguez. So there was a lot. There was a lot about Fervent it. Fervent Champion. There's a lot about it. I really liked the food. I liked the fairy tale theme. For me, it's at least great. I'd, I'd be tempted to put it in near prickly perfection. I'm going to say it's the top of the great henge. I don't, I don't think it's perfect. Top of great. Um, I think if, if it wasn't as format warping as it was, then maybe it'd be perfect. But, you know, people have their qualms with it, don't they? Okay. So. All right. Yeah, that is fine. We'll put it in great henge for now. And then moving on, we have... Theros Beyond Death, which was your first foray into magic, wasn't it? Absolutely. Um, I remember going to the pre-release with you and Ruben. Yeah. Myself a Polychronos Unchained and a Shadow Spear. Mm. Absolutely bossing it. Uh, uh, not, yeah, fully, fun. not fully knowing what you were doing, though, as you were mulliganing. Didn't know and just, how to mulligan. You weren't mulliganing. You were just putting your cards on the bottom of the deck <laughs> and then drawing seven new ones, which we never found out until months later. Yeah, but... And nobody picked me up on it. Like, well, I was my opponents. I was playing. Was like, that's that's cheating. You can't do that. I was like, yeah. Well, I didn't I play. Yeah, these, put these Ruben, on the bottom, get some new ones. I didn't play. Yeah, Ruben didn't play. Yeah, we just missed out on it. it George, it was it was a cool set though. There was obviously all those god cards. Sagas were massive. Um, and it was the last MTG set as well to release a deck builder's toolkit, which I got a few of back in the day, and they were really cool as well. So that's something for the set. Yeah, they were pretty cool. Um, yeah, very strong. Um, introduced some CDH staples in Thassa's Oracle and Underworld Breach. Yeah. Which is still rampant to this day. Yeah. Um, so again, another very strong set. And it had the coolest lands going. The lands were just amazing. They were so good. They were wicked. I mean... They... Mix lands. People call them Pokemon lands, don't they? Yeah, they, they were so good. I'd run them in every deck if I had unlimited money. Um, I think this is another one that is... It's great. I don't think it was just a set. I think it was it was fun. It was th fun to draft as well. Um, yeah, I'd put it in great, probably below throne. Um, yep, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. That's, that's where I put it as well. Yeah, nice. Oh, we are on fire. And now we move on to, we're not going to be biased, maybe <laughs> the best set of all time, the Coria <coughs> Layer of Behemoths. What do you think, Steve? Yes, prickly <laughs> perfection. Prickly perfection. Takes after his namesake. We'll, we'll just... The, um, Put it straight there now. Let's not waste any time. 
there's so many strong commander cards in this set. Like in terms of standard, it wasn't too bad, apart from, you know, mm. Minota coming out, which is what? Pan called Band in Standard, Band in mm. Pioneer, Band in everything you can think of. This is absolutely ridiculous. Um, Kin and Bond the Prodigy, ridiculous. Um, All the Triumphs. Reanimate one, Net Nethroi, Apex of Death. I, I have a theory that you could take, I don't know, any commander from a Coriolea Behemoth and build it strong on like a £50 budget or something like that. Yeah. It, it would be good. They're all so good. Oh, um, mutate as yeah. well. So good. Uh, Absolutely ridiculous mechanic. No one knows how it works to this day. <laughs> I mean, from a nostalgia um, standpoint as well, this was the uh, set that started the whole channel off, opening loads of booster box videos. Don't watch them. They're terrible. I've got no no energy in them. They're, they're the worst. <laughs> but packing prickly marmon set, that started off the whole, the whole channel. And yeah, I think... It definitely deserves its place in a uh, in prickly perfection, the goat of all sets. And it had um, the cool alternate arts as well. Yeah, yeah. The um, show showcase arts. I've got a full foil borderless gem razor, which is worth like fifty p or something. It's the coolest card I've ever seen in my life. Uh, like, yeah, I did, I remember not liking them when they first came out, but then I've I've grown to love them. Um, and then I'm a big fan, big fan. So then moving on uh, from the best set ever, we have Zendikar Rising, another really cool set. It was the first set to introduce set boosters, so it does have a bit of history behind it. What do you think about Zendikar Rising, Steve? I'm low on this one. Yeah. It didn't do much for me at all. I wasn't really excited for it. I don't think it changed much. Mm. Um, the MDFC lands were cool, and you got the new Omnath out of it. And as those are lands, they're not MDFCs, but... Um, well, they are MDFCs, but they come in mm. untapped if you pay three life. So, yeah. so you get Restoration, Academe's Awakening, those those things. They were cool. Um, I mean, yeah, nothing really strikes me about this set as being particularly interesting. And, you know, if it never mm. existed, then I probably... I mean, yeah. yeah, the MDFCs were, and still probably are, the most valuable cards in the set. Um, yeah, like I said, it had set boosters. It introduced the list. It had a reprint of uh, Lotus Cobra, which went from Mythic Rare to Rare, but... Yeah, that was about it. It was just a set. I don't know if it was dreadful. Um, I was, I say, I'm really low on this. I was, yeah. was going to never go back. All right, shall we, shall we meet in the middle for now? Put it <coughs> in the middle. Colossal dreadful. Dreadmorphal, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. And then a set which I don't know what way you're going to swing. We've got Kaldheim. I really, really liked Kaldheim. Kaldheim was cool. Yeah. Um, the foretell mechanic was very interesting. Um, still play it to this day in various like commander games and stuff like that. It's really weird when someone's like I play mono green and I'm gonna foretell this card and like mm. what the hell is that? I can I can see why you like it. You look like a Norse Norse man yourself sometimes. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah um, you had Boron Clex appear out of nowhere didn't we? So it's yeah. the start of the Phyrexians coming back. But that was um, really cool gone. looking back because it was such a slow burn as well. It was like Boron Clex one set, mm. Jin Cataxius another and then it just kicked off the whole storyline. I liked it. Yeah, you can tell they've put a lot of thought into that and how they're going to get it, get the Phyrexians coming back over a couple of sets and then explode yeah. them out and all will be won. I mean, I liked, I liked the reinstruction of Snow. Snow's always cool. It had a lot of cool stuff. I liked Sagas, which it played heavily on. It was it was a good set. It had a lot of good qualities. And the introduction as well with uh, lots of Viking-inspired stuff with all content creators, that was, that was cool as well. Is that the one where they had like a heavy metal band? Yes, yeah. Doing the release. Yeah, yeah. I thought that yeah. was that was really cool. The the introduction to a lot of these sets, especially with Strixhaven coming up, they were they were good. They've, they've done bits, uh, but where where should we mm -hmm. put Cal time? I think it was better than War of the Spark. I don't think it's as high as Thero, so I'm, I want it as top of it was a set. Top I think is where I'm going. Yeah, I'm not mad with that. I was going to say put it top of here or bottom of Theros, so. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go with that. And then moving sharply on to Strixhaven. So Strixhaven, big fan of. Uh, obviously brought the colour pie and a lot of combinations. Um, do you remember the names of all of the houses, Lewis? Ooh, Sliver, Silverquill. Sliverquill. Silverquill, Lawhold, Prismari, um, Witherbloom, with and another one I'm forgetting. Lawhold, did I say Lawhold? Quandrix. Quandrix. Is it Quandrix? Yeah, that's the Simic one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was um, it was a yeah, cool was set. Good. I liked so, well, I wasn't really mad on the keywords, I wasn't mad on like learn and magecraft and things like that. There's another really important keyword that you missed. Yes. 
you know, Ward. was a very good introduction in the set and yeah. has now been yes. blown out of proportion, I think. Obviously, yeah, it was the first set where Ward became evergreen and now Ward is everywhere. I mean, it shouldn't be on Vogue, yeah, but that's a, that's a story for another tier list. Um, yeah. Or Roaming Throne. Yeah, so <laughs> it's it's one of them where I do, I, I like parts of it, there's parts of it I don't. The Mystical Archive cards were amazing. They were really cool. Some great wow. reprints and the art was amazing, except for that one card. Um, that looked awful, which I'll put up on screen. I can't remember what it's called there, but... Faithless Looting? Faithless yeah, looting. yeah, Faithless Looting, Faith exactly. That that art is awful. Uh, some say it looks a bit like me. <laughs> um, as I say, I really like the Mr. Clark Archive artwork. Um, it's a bit yeah. more difficult to determine what a card is, though. Mm. So, I think I told you I found a Teferi's Protection in a binder the other week yeah. that I didn't know I had because it was the alternate Mystical Archive artwork. Yeah. Like, I would stuffed it in the back of the binder. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, you know, I had this. Yeah, so that came out, and then I think it was since then that all the alternate artworks have really exploded. Mm, yeah. Each and every set, haven't they? Yeah, every set's got to have some mad alternate art to get us to spend all of our money. Um, but yeah, I don't mm. know where I'd put this. Again, it, it, was, it was a set. I don't know if it's bordering on great. It's what I wouldn't be mad if they went back to. Um, again, I'd probably put it towards it, it top of it was a set. Um, I, d I like Kaldheim better, I think. Yeah. Um, so above War of the Spark and below Kaldheim is my suggestion. Okay, I will I will honour your suggestion and I'll put it right there because I'm not really bothered either way on, on Kaldheim and Strixhaven. Uh, but next, we took our first look. Uh, whenever it was, 2020? Were we 2021 at this point? I don't know. Into Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, the first D&D &D expansion. Um, so Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, obviously anyone who plays Dungeons & Dragons would be a fan of it. Mm. Um, I've never played Dungeons & Dragons before, which really seems against who I am. I'm very surprised. I'm well into that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it was really, really cool. Um, I had like Old Norbone, um, Acerac, Tiamat yeah. pop up, I think. A, we did a five. We did a budget team out deck. Yeah, we? that was so good. Um, I had like Lolf, Spider Queen. That was good as well. Um, yeah, I like. Introduced I dice it. rolling. Yep, uh, the venture into the dungeon. That was good as well. I was a big fan of yeah. the art in this set as well. Obviously, you had the uh, sort of D and D frames that you had for all the legendary creatures of the cards, and then you had the uh, D and D storybook type thing. Um, both really, really cool arts that sort of followed up on. On Strixhaven having good alternate art. Yeah, I'm okay on this set, I think. I think it was good. Mm. Um, I'm much higher on this than I was on Zendikar Rising. Yeah. Um, but I think probably Blow Wall and Spark, so. Yeah, it was, it was it was just a set, yeah. Like, Baldur's Gate was a bit better, but it was a Commander Legends thing, spin off, whatever you. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say bottom mm. of it was a set. It had it had some good, good bits for sure, but. It was okay. And now we go on to the greatest set of all time. Forget what I said about Ikoria. We have Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Steve, what do you think on this? Are you joking? Yeah, of course Are I am. Are you joking? Of course I am. This is, this is never go back. This is, I'm probably triggering some people, but I think I can say with chess that these two are terrible sets because I would struggle to differentiate certain cards between which. Like if I was to say which set had the Meat Hook Massacre, would you know straight away? No. No, ex yeah. <laughs> they it for me um, for me it's never totally. go back. It really it wasn't it wasn't that interesting. There weren't any real standout cards. Um Toxhill's a great card. Meat Mask is a great card. I am not not high on this stall. I think you're correct, we'll probably never go back here. Um day and night is such a pain to track. Yeah. Like, it's unbelievable. And again, I wouldn't know you saying Toxrill was a great card, but I wouldn't know without looking if it was a Midnight Hunt or a Crimson Bow card. Like it's there's yeah, there was not a clear differential. The fact that they were released like two standard sets released within two months of each other as well just scream like money grab. I, I wasn't a fan. I'd be happy to put them both in Never Go Back. What about you? Uh, we never come back in. Yeah, not a fan. We're what both of them? No, sir. Yeah, both yeah, of them. Stay away. Both right at the bottom of Never Go Back. Stay away from Innistrad, please. Um, next we have Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. I love this set. What about you, Steve? I also love this set. Um, the channel lands, incredible. Channel lands. Fantastic. And it's crazy. It says how long or how many sets come out now that these decks, I guess <laughs> as well for the Innistrad decks, are still in standard. 
Um, there's a lot of Kamigawa yeah. cards that still have a lot of good play again, mainly the uh, mainly those channel lands. Uh, but it was it was a really good set. I really enjoyed drafting it. Had a lot of cool things, ninjas, samurai. Love a bit of ninjutsu. So it says a lot about me that I like this set, and again, it introduces some absolutely busted cards like Able yeah, Mirror Breaker, well, the Channel Lands. You, um, you are farewell. a busted, you are a busted boy. Fails the absolute scourge of every, you know, yeah. Friday Night Magic I mean, under it, table, isn't it? I, I know quite a few sets have a few bands eventually, but this had a few bands, Light and Boat, Despair as well. It was a, uh, yeah, it was it was a big set. I liked it. It was it was fun. I'm high on this. I'm really high on this. I think it goes bottom of Great Henge. Not as good as Theros or Eldraine, but I'm putting it up there. Uh, to me, I think I liked it more than Theros. I didn't like it as much as Eldraine. I'd probably put it in between. And yeah, I really enjoyed I'm trying to think of what I enjoyed drafting more. And I think I enjoyed Kamigawa more. But I'll, uh, I'll put it I'll put it bottom. Bottom for now. Uh, next, we go to Streets of New Capenna. Again, another set I really, really enjoyed. Um, again, another set with absolutely insane cards like Jet Mare and Electric Shredder. Um, the, what were the um, keywords that were introduced in this um, one? What's the ability where you discard a card? You had... Card, put a counter on something. Uh, you had Blitz, Connive, Casualty. Connive, Connive yeah. One. Yeah, because that's, that's used a lot with Rafine, <laughs> isn't it? Great, great card. Yeah. All over the place in standard. Made. Blitz is excellent as well. Mm -hmm. um, I built a Henzy deck, which is I, absolutely insane. Good fun. I can I can appreciate it was a good set to some, but for me, you know, when you just don't connect for no reason to some sets, that was this for me. Yeah. There was no cards that I mm -hmm. suddenly really like leaned towards. Uh, yeah, I just I never connected to it. For me, it was definitely just a set. It wasn't bad, but it it wasn't great. I really liked the the three color aspect that they did with it but yeah for me it's just a set um okay fair enough uh, where do you want to put where do i want to put it yeah where would you put it i think below strict saving below strict saving above Lord and spark yeah that is fine with me and next we move on to the first of the four-part war of the phyrexians uh, dominaria united Again, this is a set that doesn't really stick in the mind for me for anything apart from two cards in Shield with the Apocalypse, Apocalypse, <laughs> Apocalypse and uh, Leyline Binding. Yeah, um, I both thought... Absolutely ridiculous cards. I thought you were going to say Liliana of the Veil, vale, just because that is still a shit-hot standard card. But yeah, it was, it, was just, it was just a set. There was nothing amazing about it obviously it focused a lot on stun counters poison legendary creatures you know what i'd be tempted to put it in colossal dreadful i think the only thing that's holding it up is sheldred yeah okay let's put it above zender car though yeah because i actually remember something about this one yeah okay yeah i guess it, <laughs> i guess it was more recent wasn't it but let's drag yeah. you there moving on then to the brothers war which was obviously still part of the Phyrexi set but was more Standalone in that it focused entirely on the war between Urza and Mishra. Yeah, and I um, I get that people are going to be big on the law behind this one, but again, I'm really, really low on this one. It doesn't. If you ask me anything about this set, I'll be like, uh, yeah, no, I can't really remember much. I know there's the meld cards in um, I, Urza and Mishra. I didn't like so Urza Lord Protector going to get the Meek Stone. I think that's a cool idea. I, um, I didn't but, really like Meld. I didn't really like Prototype. There's things like um, Gix. Gix is still a card that's used a fair bit in Standard, but to me, it's another one where I think they had so much space between the end of the, the Phyrexian story. They were just filling random space with sets, and to me, it's another one that I'd say was probably Colossal Dreadful. Uh, yeah, it's definitely above Never Go Back. The line is a decent set, but yeah. um, I, think, I think below Zendikar, to be honest. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's whack it there. I think for the next one, you pick up a bit of steam. Still probably not great, but we've got Phyrexia All Will Be One. Like, I don't think anything in the set was really amazing. Obviously, you had the return of Elish Norn as the leader of New Phyrexia. It was a good card. You got the Atraxa. Um, and yeah, they, 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 yeah. they, com Huge card. they completed like half of the Planeswalkers. And it was good. It was a good build up to... Uh, March the Machines, because it's like, oh no, everyone's going to lose. You know, they're going to win. 
But um, yeah, it, it just didn't, it was, a, it was another one in a long phase of sets that didn't really do a lot for me. Um, I, I'm going to disagree with you. Yeah. I quite enjoyed this set. I um, enjoyed I, drafting it as well. So. Mm. I'm, I would put it in it was a set, but I'm, I'm open to, to your thoughts. I think it was a set. Um, I don't think it was as good as Kaldheim or Strixhaven, but I think it was better than Nuka Penna. So that's where I would put it right in the middle there. Yeah, okay, we can do that. Above. When, when you were saying how you didn't like it, I thought you were going to be... No, 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 no. It, it was a set. I can appreciate Very it for what it was. Ahead of Capenna? Yes. Okay, cool. And then we have the big one, March of the Machine. Obviously the last one in the end of the Phyrexian War, another event set. I really liked this set. What did you think, Steve? Yes, um, I enjoyed it as well. I, I think... think it was better than all will be won. I mm -hmm. bring everything together and all these, was it all, all the double cards? Yeah, like, the multiverse, oh, yeah, multiverse legends. They're really, really cool. And um, they, and then, it, it's always a risk when you introduce brand new stuff. They introduce battles, which I thought were amazing. Really cool. Big hit, yeah. I like the battles. Yeah. I, I would I would say it was great. Obviously, you had Shieldred, you had Itali, Primal Conqueror. There was all of just the, the Phyrexians before they all got defeated. A lot of good cards. And obviously, the best invasion was Invasion of Ikoria, which is the greatest set ever. So I think this is <laughs> a great set. Yeah, I'm, I'm high on it as well. Um, had all of the um, Phyrexian flip creators, mm -hmm. didn't it? They flip into a saga and then back into their original selves. I think it's a really mm. cool idea. Like the sort of mm. inevitability of the Phyrexians coming in for you and you can't do anything about it. I would, for me, I'd probably put it uh, in between Throne and Theros, but I know how much you love Theros, so I'm willing to put it a little bit lower. Whoa, 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 let's not get too hasty here. Um, <laughs> hey now. I, I think it goes bottom of Great Henge or top of it wasn't set. Okay, all right. Well, as I want it high in Great Henge, we'll put it right at the bottom, right at the bottom of Great Henge. We've got a lot filling up okay. in it was a set. And uh, speaking of something that is probably going to be awful, I don't really even want to talk about it, is March the Machine's Aftermath. It was that epilogue booster where I think it had about three or four cards in. It was clearly... We've built all these cards for March of the Machines. There's a few left. We'll put it in another random set. I think it's uh, it's absolute doo doo. Yeah, in terms of a set, wasn't great. Yeah. It was like thirty cards or something. Yeah, um, the fact that I mean, some cool cards in there though. There was like, there was some good Alex cards. and our set and. But um, I've only included this in the list because it is on the list of all of the expansions. But it was a waste of a set. You can't really count it as a set. So I think it has to go and never go back. Yeah. Maybe, maybe at the top. I still think it's better than the Innistrad set, so. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm sorry with that. Cool. Uh, next, definitely a better set. We've got Wilds of Eldraine. What are your thoughts? So everyone was very excited for this set. Um, I think it was good fun to draft. Um, mm -hmm. I don't do much drafting, but I did spend a lot of time drafting this set. I think Celebration is a bit of a clunky mechanic in order to, you know, you have to have two things enter in order to do mm. something not that great. Yeah. Um, food, there's a big focus on Thomas. food. Rolls, roll tokens. The, they were the rolls. Rolls were good, but Virtu really annoying. Roll, virtuous roll. You wicked roll, uh, monster roll. But obviously, in all the uh, pre cons, you did not get enough tokens, which was just crazy. Uh, but it was good. Yeah. But like a lot of sequels, they don't live up to the hype. And obviously, I think it was good, but it was no Throne of Eldraine. No, absolutely not. Um, I'm not too high on this one. I think probably goes below War of the Spark in it was a set. Okay, I'd, I'd probably put it uh, a little bit higher. I'd probably put it above Nuka Penna. Um, yeah. didn't really, uh, but I, I wouldn't. I think... Your I, list, mate. I think, well, I'm going to make an executive call. I know we both drafted it a lot, <laughs> so I think we'll put it we above did, yeah. it for that. Um, and then uh, the second sort of follow-up post Phyrexian War, we have Lost Caverns of Ixlan. So another one that everyone's very, very happy with in terms of the themes, dinosaurs, pirates, etc. I mean, um, how could you not, not like a set that's dinosaurs and pirates? It's just crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Um, in introduced Roaming Throne to the world, Ooh, which is... Yep. Is that a mistake? Uh, maybe, it, uh, maybe. Will it get but banned? I don't know. There were, there were a lot of good cards, like Bone Horde, Dracosaur. That is quality. I love that card. Galta. Who doesn't want a new Galta? It was, it was wicked. Reprint well, Carnosaur. Yeah. Reprint Cavern of Souls. I really like uh, the whole map thing as well. 
I, uh, I like maps, I like exploring, I like discover. It's, it has a lot to like about it and I think not a lot to dislike about it. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Um, I wasn't too high on the crafting mechanic. Mm. Um, I think it's, you know, a cool thing to do and to get off when mm. it happens, but... It's again, I think it was, yeah, a, so it, it was a set, wasn't it? Somewhere, somewhere in the middle. I think it was a set. Um, I think it probably goes, it was bottom of it was a set, okay. based on what we've got there at the moment. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It was, it was a set. Uh, and now we move on to the most recent of the uh, expansions. We have Murders at Karlov Manor. I didn't like this set. I'll say it. I don't like the artwork, the alternate artwork. I think it's really difficult to no, read. The, mag and the magnifying glass murder mystery art, not it. The, th yeah, the, the themes look good to me. I didn't like the like um, suspect, investigate. I. I wasn't. I didn't like the cases. I thought it was a cool idea at first, but they're just naff. Um, Punky, yeah. Yeah, collecting evidence. No, you're not going to see much of that in things like Commander. It's, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. I think it was probably colossally dreadful. Big mole, Anzrag. Big mole, God. mole. Huge. Big. That's that's got to drag you up like three or four. <laughs> Tears, no? No, I think that's like maybe if we ranked commanders, maybe if we ranked rule commanders, uh, but it's not like <laughs> like Shieldra with Dominar United, it's not enough to hold up a set. I think I think it's dreadful. Um yeah, okay, let's go with dreadful. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy to put it anywhere in dreadful, to be honest. It was still above Zendikar, I think. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh we won't spend too much time on these. I just whacked them in at the end. Uh we've got court set 2020. I don't remember much about it. There were loads of elementals, loads of ley lines. Um, yeah, you had Soren as the big card, Field of the Dead. Besides that, it was it was pretty pretty dreadful. I, I, I reckon it was probably a good set, but we yeah. just weren't there for it. I mean, we'll go on to it, but I really liked Corset 21, but Corset 20, I'd put it towards the bottom of it was a set or, or dreadful. Yeah, stick it right at the bottom of it was a set. I think. I think obviously they're there as sort of introductory sets and they're not too, you know, crazy, but it just wasn't one for me. Whereas Corset 2021 was amazing. It was all about Teferi, you had dogs and cats and yeah, it was <laughs> it was really fun. Um, yeah, big on mill, big on prowess, phasing. I liked it, what about you? Terry of the Peaks, Ugin. Yes. Elder Gargaroth. Elder Gargaroth. the same cars. Yeah. The Teferi that, you know, you can uptick on everyone's turn um, and have like 15 different versions of it yeah, that in was terms mad. of artwork. Heroic Intervention. Um, it had a lot of good cards and a lot of cards that are still expensive sort of staples. I haven't seen too many reprints. I think it's a, it's definitely a good set. I'd, I'd be torn. I I think I think this goes bottom of Great Henge. Yeah, that is, that is where I was going to suggest. Great, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to put it bottom of Great and then we've got the first Modern Horizons. Um, obviously, it was a non-standard rotating deck, but I thought we'd just whack it in here. Um, yeah, big on Slithers, big on Hybrid Manor, Snow. It was it was okay. Yeah, there's obviously a lot of power in the Modern Horizons sets, um, but wasn't there for it. Didn't do anything for me. Mm. Like In terms of what was in there, I could say Force Negation and Yorgmouth and... That's about it. I don't know anything else. Yeah, so no, I think I'm the only low on this one. The only thing you remember from the old Modern Horizon set is the cards that have loads of value still. So obviously you got Force Negation, Ren and Six, things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first Slither. There was a lot, but that's kind of all you remember from the set. Again, we're probably offending loads of people here, but I, it was, it was just a set, wasn't it? It was a set. Just a set to me, mate. I don't think it, it was. I don't think it was dreadful. Obviously, it is there to, to serve a purpose for all those modern people, but we're not very modern, are we? Um, I'd put it sort of towards the bottom, probably above core, core set twenty. Okay, yep, I'm alright with that. But then moving on to one that I definitely enjoyed a lot more. It was Modern Horizons Two. Yeah, so um, obviously we were around for this one. Mm. Uh, reprinted the Fetchlands. Uh, Ragavan. Produced Ragavan. Ragavan was crazy. Saga. Yeah. Esper Sentinel, absolutely insane cards, like really, really pushing the power level. So again, I like this set. Yeah, obviously um, they had these enemy fetch lands that were reprinted as rares. There was there was a lot to like about this uh, this set and the art, the alternate art was really good as well, that weird little sketch style. I was I was a fan of this. No, I, I wasn't I wasn't a fan of the art alternate artwork. See that's where um, the alternate art is. Set. 
they're all very hit and miss, aren't they? People, it's, they're like Marmite, like, people love them or they hate them. I, I really liked it. Mm -hmm. Um, where would you put it then? Um, the I would put it sort of probably towards high up in it was a set. I don't think it was like elite in the in the greatness. Um, I I put it high up in, in it was a set. I think it was better than Wilds of Eldraine, but not as good as it will be one. You know what? I'm happy to agree with you there. That's that's high up enough for me. I think it, to be fair, it might be better than Phyrexia, but who you know, it's it's pretty close, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, right. What's the next one we're going um, on to? We are finishing up today with a set that had 1,600 plus cards. A set that was designed for Chaos Drafting. Um, a set which I... I don't want to say where I want to put it straight away, but we have Mystery Booster. See, I've never touched a Mystery Booster in my life. This was, <laughs> just from a opening perspective, this was possibly the most fun set that I've enjoyed since playing Magic the Gathering. There were so many crazy cards you could get, like Mana Crypt, you could get Teferi's Protection, Demonic Tutor, Ristic Study, Expropriate. Like the card selection was absolutely crazy. And the fact that it was so easily accessible was, uh, I don't know, it's a big sample. I just, I loved it. I would put it in Prickly Perfection. I think it's the other other set that deserves to go right at the top. But obviously well, you... Um, well, I said, I've, I've never touched a mystery got, booster. You've got never so it, it was all the fun coming from the fact that there's like 2,000 cards you could possibly get. Yeah, but it was it was just, there was something fun about it. It was different. And the fact you could get cards from years past, obviously they weren't the exact things. They were just reprints, but it was, it was fun. It brought down the price of quite a lot of cards as well, which for me, I like. I know people wouldn't like that. People wouldn't like reprints of certain cards, but it was amazing. I will not take anything less than great on this one. Stick it in Prickly Perfection then. I oh. imagine I'll enjoy it as well. Oh. We'll, we'll have to organise a draft we should, we should. around. I don't even know if they're still that accessible, but we should buy a box. So, Steve, that is our list. Are you happy with it? Um, yeah, just scanning through. I think I um, wouldn't change my mind I'm... on anything there. Looks, I think, yeah, looks spot on. I think it's perfect. I don't think anyone could disagree no. with us. And if you do disagree with us, let us know in the comments below. Have we really triggered you? And is there anything else you'd like us to rank next? Like how, how hot a planeswalker is. We could rank anything. Uh, yeah, let us know. Bye.